Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us, Saint Joseph, Pray for us, Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us, San Roque. Pray for us, San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us, San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather this Sunday to celebrate this Eucharist, let us thank the Lord for all the blessings that He has given us. Let us also open our hearts to Jesus. And let us allow Him to nourish us, to purify us, to strengthen us, and to save us. So that we may become less unworthy to partake of these mysteries of God's love. Let us now humbly acknowledge our many sins, and let us beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to his people on Lord earth. Will. We praise you, you, we bless you, you we adore you, you, we glorify you, you we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God Heavenly, Heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, Son of, of the Father, Father you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb, on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for He is our God, and we are the people who shepherds, the flock He guides. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Mazah in the desert where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. 
If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband, I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without destruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death. Light has arisen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, in our Gospel this Sunday, Jesus encounters a man with an unclean spirit, isang taong inaalihan ng masamang espiritu. And it is very surprising that the unclean spirit 
who spoke through the man knows who Jesus is. Ang masamang espiritu kilala si Jesus. The unclean spirit said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. My dear brothers and sisters, even the unclean spirit knows who Jesus is. This tells us that not because you know Jesus, you are already good, you are already holy, and you are already on the side of God. Hindi pala batayan yung pagkakakilala kay Jesus para sabihin na ako'y tagasunod ni Jesus, na ako'y mabuti at banal. Mere knowledge of Jesus is not enough because even the evil spirit know who Jesus is. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, kilala ko si Jesus, kaya mabuti akong tao. Nagsisimba ako tuwing linggo. Nagdarasal ako araw-araw. Nagrorosaryo ako at nagluluben na pa. Nagbabasa ako ng Biblia, kaya mabuti at banal ako. Hindi lahat ng nakakakilala kay Jesus ay mabuti at banal. Dahil kahit ang masamang espiritu, kilala si Jesus. At sinasabi pa kung sino si Jesus, ikaw ang banal ng Diyos. Kaya mag-iingat pala tayo. Hindi dahil parang nagsasalita na kilala na ang Diyos ay makadiyos na. Hindi dahil kabisado ang buong Biblia, mukhang banal ay makadiyos na. Dahil kahit ang masamang espiritu kilala at makapagsasalita tungkol sa Diyos. And so what spells the difference between someone who just merely knows God and someone who truly believes in God? Paano ngayon nating malalaman kung itong taong ito, itong nagsasalitang ito, hindi lamang kilala si Jesus, kundi tunay na makadiyos? Look at the question of the evil spirit to Jesus. He said, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Ano ba ang pakialam mo sa amin, Jesus? That spells the difference. The evil spirit knows who Jesus is, but he does not want Jesus to meddle with his life. Kilala kita, pero wala kang pakialam sa akin. Kilala kita, pero wag mong pakikialaman ang buhay ko. Wala kang kinalaman sa akin. The devil knows who Jesus is. But the devil does not want Jesus to have anything to do with him. My dear brothers and sisters, a very important lesson for us today. A true Christian does not only know God. A true Christian knows God and allows God to meddle with his life. Yun ang tunay na Kristiyano. Hindi lamang yung kilala si Jesus, kundi yung sinasabi niyang, Jesus, may pakialam ka sa buhay ko. Jesus, kilala kita. Sumasampalataya ako sa iyo, kaya gabayan mo ang buhay ko. 
Yan ang tunay na Kristiyano at yan ang tunay na makadiyos. Kilala si Jesus at hinahayaan si Jesus na makialam sa kanyang buhay. May kinalaman si Jesus sa kanyang pamumuhay. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that many of us, if not everyone, does not want people to meddle with their life. Ayaw na ayaw natin yung pinapakialaman tayo. Ang nakakatuwa, ayaw natin pinapakialaman tayo, pero mahilig naman tayong makialam sa buhay ng iba. Pero pag sa atin na nakikialam, galit na galit na tayo. Ayaw natin ang pinapakialaman tayo. Kapag may mga taong nakikialam sa ating buhay, sasabihin natin, walang pakialaman. Buhay ko to. Wala kang pakialam dito. Wala rin naman akong pakialam sa'yo. Kaya anong karapatan mong pakialaman ako? Do not meddle with my life. Get out of my life. Do not interfere in my life. Ganyan tayo. Ayaw natin nang tayo ay pinapakialaman. But my dear brothers and sisters, do we also tell these words to God? Do we also tell God, You have nothing to do with my life. Do not meddle with my life. Huwag mo akong pakialaman. Buhay ko ito. Wala kang pakialam dito. Huwag mo akong pakialaman. Pamilya ko ito. Wala kang pakialam dito. Huwag mo akong pakialaman. Bansa namin ito. Wala kang kinalaman dito. Pati ba ang Diyos? Pinapalayo natin sa ating buhay? Pati ba ang Diyos? Pinipilian lang natin ng mga lugar. O dito, pwede kang makialam. Pero dito, huwag ka nang makikialam. Kapag linggo, may pakialam ka sa buhay ko. Pero yung ibang araw, huwag ka nang makialam. Kapag nagdarasal ako, yan, may pakialam ka sa buhay ko. Pero kapag nasa trabaho na ako, kapag business na, kapag sa padalakad, papamalakad ko na sa pamilya ko, huwag ka nang makialam. Do we just open certain areas in our life for God and for the other areas of our life, we shut Him out. My dear brothers and sisters, do we also tell God, What have you to do with me? Why meddle with my life? And if we say those words, if we try to get rid of God from our lives, then we are almost sure what kind of spirit possesses us. Ang masamang espiritu palaging ipagtatabuyan ng Diyos sa ating buhay. In our first reading today, <clears throat> Moses spoke to the people about the prophets that God will raise for His people. And Moses specified The Lord, through Moses, specified what the prophet will do. A prophet will speak not his words, but the words of God. A prophet speaks in the name of God. Ang isang propeta magsasalita hindi ng kanyang sariling salita, kundi ng salita ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, until now, God sends prophets in our midst. 
And the question is, do we listen to the prophets? Do we listen to the words of God spoken to us by the messengers He sends? And do we allow the words of God spoken by the prophets to guide our lives, to guide our decisions, to guide our attitudes and our lifestyles. My dear brothers and sisters, the church is a prophet. Part of the ministry of the church is to be a prophet. Kaya ang simbahan nagsasalita ng salita ng Diyos. Kahit na minsan ang salita ng Diyos ay inconvenient, mahirap tanggapin. Kung sa simbahan lamang, sana ang sasabihin na lang namin yung ikatutuwa ng lahat. Pero dahil hindi yung salita ng simbahan ang dapat ng sabihin kundi ang salita ng Diyos, Minsan yung salita ng Diyos nakakasakit, nakakabagabag. The Word of God disturbs us. And so when the church fulfills her prophetic ministry, many times there are people who react and get angry. Many times the church will be accused of meddling with the affairs of society. Madala sasabihin, wag na kayong makialam. Walang pakialam ang simbahan. Walang pakialam ang pananampalataya dito. Iba yung politika, iba ang simbahan. My dear brothers and sisters, those are the very words of the unclean spirit. What have you to do with us, Jesus? Kaya mag-iingat po tayo sa mga pagkakataon na pinagtatabuyan natin si Jesus sa ating buhay. Kapag sinasabi nating buhay ko to, wala kayong pakialam dito. Kapag sinasabi nating katawan ko ito, wala kayong pakialam dito. This is my body. And so I am free to do what I want with my body. If we say, this is my family, and God has nothing to do with my family, business ko ito, ako ang nagpapatakbo dito, walang kinalaman ang pananampalataya dito, politika ito, walang kinalaman ang pananampalataya dito, then we must be very careful because the unclean spirit might be speaking through us. Sa mga pagkakataon na pinalalayo natin ang Diyos sa ating buhay at sinasabi natin, wala kang pakialam, huwag kang makialam, masamang espiritu ang nagsasalita. And during these moments, let us ask Jesus to say the words He uttered to the unclean spirit. May Jesus also tell us, Quiet, come out of Him. Sa mga pagkakataon na pinalalayo natin sa si Jesus, sana sabihin din Jesus, Tumahimik ka, lumabas ka sa Kanya. Sa mga pagkakataon na kahit sa ating lipunan, ipinagtatabuyan ng pananampalataya at ng Diyos, sana sabihin din Jesus, tumahimik ka, lumabas ka sa kanila. My dear brothers and sisters, can we really live without God? Pwede bang wala talagang pakialam ang Diyos sa ating buhay? St. Paul, in our second reading today, tells us, I would like you to be free of anxieties. I would like you to be free of worries. 
And how will you be free from anxieties, from fears and worries? St. Paul says, Adhere to the Lord without distraction. Focus on the Lord and you will be free from fear, worry, and anxiety. Kapag ang tuon natin ay ang Panginoon, wala tayong katatakutan, wala tayong pangamba. Adherence to the Lord is allowing God to be part of our life. Adherence to the Lord is opening my life to God and telling God, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Rule in my life so that I will be free from distractions, from anxieties and fear. Kapag hindi tayo nakatutok sa Panginoon, konting bagay lang, takot na takot na tayo. Kapag hindi tayo nakatutok sa Panginoon, ang dami nating pangamba sa buhay. Pero kapag nakatutok tayo sa Panginoon at hinahayaan natin ng Panginoon na mamayani sa ating buhay, mapapanatag tayo. Sasabihin natin, ako, hindi ko kayang harapin ng problemang ito, pero may Diyos na nagahari sa aking buhay, kaya siya ang bahala, kaya niya ang lahat. My dear brothers and sisters, do you allow God to meddle in your life? What has God to do in your life? May pakialam ba ang Diyos sa iyong buhay? Come to think of it, my dear brothers and sisters, God has all the right to meddle in our life because He created us. He saved us and He sustains our life every single moment. May pakialam talaga ang Diyos kasi ang buhay natin ay sa Kanya at ang lahat ng meron tayo ay galing sa Kanya. Kaya talagang dapat may pakialam siya. Because my dear brothers and sisters, the moment God stops meddling in our life, it means death to us. Sa oras na itigil ng Diyos ang Kanyang pakikialam sa atin, parang tumigil na rin tayo sa ating buhay. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today let us tell God, Lord, meddle all you want. Makialam ka hanggat gusto mo because your meddling is life for me. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins, sins the, resurrection the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Through the gospel, Christ speaks to us with words of eternal authority and deeds of healing power. Through Him, let us pray with confidence, and for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may continue to teach Christ's truth with authority. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the hearts of world leaders may not be hardened as they hear Christ's voice today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those considering the religious life may not be afraid to say yes to God's call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That purity and respect for human dignity will destroy the unclean spirits of pornography and sexual abuse in our society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our own petitions. Let us remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, all-powerful, we place before you our needs and pray confidently for your help and mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of, our, of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name, name of, the Lord. of the Lord, Hosanna in the, in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating banal na misa ngayong umagang ito. Maraming salamat po sa pagpunta sa Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat po sa mga nagtiis at nagtsaga na tumayo sa likod at sa labas para makapagdiwang ng misa ngayong linggong ito. At maraming salamat din po sa inyong cooperation sa ating mga health protocols. Nais ko rin pong pasalamatan ang mga kasama natin ngayon sa pamamagitan ng live streaming ng misang ito. We wish to thank our brothers and sisters who are joining us, the online na uh, a live streaming of this Mass. Our brothers and sisters here in the Philippines and even abroad, thank you very much for being part of the uh, online community of the Manila Cathedral. May nabubuo na ng TMC subscribers. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. At uh, maraming salamat po lalong-lalo na sa lahat ng tulong na inyong pinadadala para sa mga misyon ng Manila Cathedral. I also wish to thank the staff and volunteers of the Manila Cathedral who are assisting us in this Mass. This coming Saturday, February 6, the Archdiocese of Manila will officially open the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. 
Alam po natin na sa taong ito ay pinagdiriwang natin yung ikalimang daang taon ng pagdating ng Kristyanismo sa ating bansa. No? 1521 to 2021. At sa February 6 po ay uh, ipagdiriwang natin yung pagbubukas na ito sapagkat yung araw ding iyon, February 6, Noon namang 1579 ay itinatag ang Manila bilang kauna-unahang diocese sa Pilipinas. So, it is also the 442nd anniversary of Manila as the first and the mother diocese of our country. Sana po ay makasama kayo sa pagdiriwang na ito kahit sa live streaming lamang ng banal na misa. Kaya po, nagsisimula na tayo ng ating mga paghahanda. No? Isang magandang paraan po para maging aware at tayong lahat sa napakahalagang pagdiriwang na ito ng ikalimang daang taon ng ating pagiging Kristiyano ay sa pamamagitan ng ating mission song. Tuwi po tayo may malaking celebration sa simbahan, palaging merong kanta na naka, nakaakibat dito sa ating pagdiriwang. Noong year 2000, baka naaalala nyo pa yung Jubilee Song. Noong bumisita si Pope John Paul II noong 1995, World Youth Day, Tell the World of His Love. Noong 2003, World Meeting of Families na ginawa rin dito sa Pilipinas, Only Selfless Love ang title ng kanta. Noong 2015, noong bumisita si Pope Francis, We Are All God's Children. Kaya po sa taong ito, meron din tayong bagong awit ang ating mission song na ang title ay We Give Our Yes. Ito po ay kinumpose ng ating Paris Archdiocese of Manila, si Father Carlo Magno Marcelo. Siya rin yung nag-compose ng Jubilee Song, Only Selfless Love. No? At nung kinakanta natin tuwing pagkatapos ng misa, ng awit sa mahal na Birheng Maria, no? at uh, ito po ay kinanta, yung We Give Our Yes ay inawit ni Miss Jamie Rivera na siya rin kumanta ng mga kanta ni Father Carlo. Kaya ito po ay pagpapanibago sa ating pagdiriwa ngayon. Pagkatapos po ng ating recessional song after the hymn to Our Lady, we will see the lyric and action na uh, a video of this song no, sa ating mga monitors. At uh, sana po ay matutunan nating lahat para ating maawit sa taong ito at hindi lamang awitin kundi sa misyon ay binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon we could always give our yes may God bless this new week and may we always show to the world what a life that is with God means ipakita natin sa mundo ano yung buhay na pinapakialaman ng Diyos The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in His peace and grant you the gifts of His blessings now and forever. Amen. May He free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in His love now and forever. Amen so that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.